dolls. One doll inside a bigger doll inside a bigger doll. In this case, pyramids inside bigger pyramids inside bigger pyramids. So, you go and hand your check over at a bank. The person you hand your check over to will not know what the bank manager behind them is deciding. He won't know what's happening at regional level. They won't know what's happening at national level. And eventually at the top of the bank you've got a small cabal and they're the ones that know what the bank's really about. That bank goes into another pyramid and another pyramid until you have one that encompasses the whole of the global banking system. Moving trillions of dollars around the world every day. Stock market up, push the money in. Stock market down, pull the money out. Oh no, it's random, I heard an economist tell me. <laughs> and at the top of all these pyramids, which down here seem completely unconnected, are the same uh, network of families who are manipulating the whole system. Some of which were mentioned in that book, Superclass, but the connections never were. So when we're looking at presidents and prime ministers and stuff like that, we're not looking here where we're supposed to think they are. They're down here somewhere in the real pyramid, and they're in there to administrate into reality changes in legislation which advance the centralization of global power into fewer and fewer hands. That's where the power is, particularly there. And that's there whether you vote Tory, Democrat, Labour, whatever. So when I hear, it's Bush, stop Bush, Bush is doing this, no he's not. He's, he's there as an administrator into reality of changes in legislation for eight years. After that, someone else will do it. Because there's a constant that's manipulating both sides. I also talk here, it's the Freemasons, and, and, and yes, the Freemasons and other secret societies are manipulated. The vast majority of Freemasons haven't got a clue what it's about. They think it's just a gentleman's club and they're doing a nice dinner. <laughs> But out of the top of these secret societies, different ones, Knights of Malta and all the rest of it, there's another one which is never talked about. And that's where the action is, and that's where the manipulation comes from, to put the right people into power at the right time for the right outcome. What you get, you can do it as pyramids, you can do it as a spider's web. The spider in the center, and all these strands symbolically represent different organizations of various kinds. The closer to the spider these organizations are, the more elite, secretive, and unexposed they are. As you come out from this web, you start to hit organizations that directly interact with the public arena. And here's some of them. This is a secret society uh, set up by Cecil Rhodes uh, before he died in 1902, and has been uh, taken on since. Bilderberg Group, this is one step back from the um, public arena. Uh, people who, who are massively influential in terms of their position meet every year in different parts of the world and any, in, under any other situation it would be in all the newspapers, hey all these people are meeting, what's going on? No, no, hardly a mention in the mainstream media. George Osborne, the uh, Chancellor of um, David Davis's party, was at the last Bilderberg meeting in Washington just a few weeks ago. What was discussed? Why was he there? Why isn't he talking about it? The Club of Rome, that's been manipulating the environmental movement. The Trilateral Commission, set up in America, and one of the people that set that up, along with David Rockefeller, who's a major player in this over the uh, decades, is Zbigniew Brzezinski. He was a co-founder with Rockefeller, the man who's currently behind Barack Obama. Council on Foreign Relations is another one. And these manipulated into, into reality the United Nations, which is a stepping stone to world government. It's Brzezinski, like I say. Now, these are, the, these are the key things in terms of how they do it. I, I came up with this term uh, many years ago to describe something that at the time was called the Hegelian dialectic by some people. It's problem, reaction, solution. It's played on us constantly, and it is devastatingly effective. It works like this. 
You want to change society in a way that you know if you announce openly what you want, there'll be a massive reaction against it. More cameras, more control, DNA database, invasion of Iraq, invasion of Afghanistan. So you don't do it openly. You play problem, reaction, solution. Stage one, you create a problem. Could be a, a run on a currency, a government collapse, a terrorist attack, a war. You then tell the public, through an unquestioning, overwhelmingly, mainstream media, the version of that problem that you want people to believe. Bin Laden orchestrated it all. Uh, Lee Harvey Oswald killed Kennedy. And what you're looking for at stage two, the reaction, is a public reaction of outrage, of fear, and of words to the effect of something must be done, this can't go on, what are they going to do about it? At which point those who've uh, created the problem covertly and blamed someone else, got the public reaction, do something, then openly offer the solutions to the problems they have themselves created, which are changes in legislation which advance the agenda that the public have known nothing about. You look at the world before 9-11, talking about Big Brother, and now you look at it now. Coincidence? No chance. I went on a radio station, very quickly, in Los Angeles, mainstream one, a few days after 9-11, um, when I was saying on the internet, the official story makes no sense at all. And I had two guys, they had two people interviewing me. I, didn't know, I, I asked them which one had the brain cell that day, I couldn't work it out. <laughs> what are you on, mate? All this stuff. And I said at the end, okay, I'll do your deal. Have me on in a month to six weeks, and if ABC has not happened, I'll hold my hand up and say I was wrong. Yeah, mate, well, I'll be on, no problem. Yeah, never did. Because we had the Patriot Act and other changes justified by 9-11, which was what I said would happen. Not because I'm a genius. I know how the bloody thing works after 20 years. They're the most predictable uh, people in the world once you know what the game is and how they operate. The 33rd level of uh, Freemasonry, the third, third degree, they have a motto, Ordo ab chaos, order out of chaos. Problem, reaction, solution. Very difficult to manipulate harmony. Manipulating chaos, piece of cake. So create the chaos and then offer the solution out of the chaos, which is changes in society that you want. This is what Bush said. You're free and freedom is beautiful and you know it'll take time to restore chaos and order, order out of chaos, but we will immediately after 9-11. So during the Second World War, these bloodlines were funding both sides to create a conflict which led to a massive change in the global order. Exactly what was planned. It's all in detail in my books years ago. That's why I was able to say in those early books, in the mid-90s, that the Bush family, through Prescott Bush, the present president's grandfather, funded Adolf Hitler through a, a, a company called the uh, Union Banking Corporation. At the time, no. The head of the Holocaust Museum in Florida, Loftus, John Loftus, came out and said the same a few years ago. The Bush family fortune came from funding Hitler, and even the Guardian picked it up in the last year. So, this is how it works, and it's being played on us all the time. Global warming caused by man-made sources being another one. And this is the Nazi technique. Nazi technique. That's who we're dealing with in terms of mentality. Why, of course, the people don't want war? Why should some slob, poor slob on a farm want to risk his life in a war when the best he can get out of it is to come back to his farm in one piece? Naturally, the common people don't want war, neither in Russia nor in England, nor for that matter in Germany. That is understood. But after all, it is the leaders of the country who determine the policy, and it is always a simple matter to drag the people along, whether it is a democracy or a fascist dictatorship. Voice or no voice, the people can all...